I'm going to show you how I use this Notion workspace in order to keep track of all of my AI art, all of the prompts that come with that art, and also how I manage over 500 plus design components within this workspace. I've researched the 10 most important categories when it comes to generating good AI art, and I've added 50 items within each of those important components. When it comes to generating AI art, this has improved my workflow so much. So let me dive into the workspace and show you around. So this is my AI art studio. It's very basic, but so powerful. On the right here, I have my favorite components that I like using most often, so I can open up these toggle lists and see the subjects that I like to use often, I can see the styles that I like to use often, and so on. Over on the left here, you're going to notice this beautiful gallery of some of my favorite AI art that I've ever generated. And when I click into one of these, what you'll notice is I have the prompt I used in order to generate that picture. And up top here, I have buttons in order to navigate the workspace. So if I wanna to add to my gallery, I can just hit add to gallery. If I wanna add a new component to the 500 existing components already within this dashboard, then I can do so there. And if I wanna open up my components database where it shows all 500 of those components, then I can do so with this button. When we scroll down, we get to my favorite part of the dashboard, which is my engineered mid journey prompts. Now, each one of these prompts have the ability to generate something different. If I want a hyper realistic photo, I'll go in here and I'll copy and paste in my template prompt into mid journey, and then I will edit it from there. So if you do want to get your hands on this workspace with the 500 plus design components, the 10 engineered mid journey prompts, all future updates of the template, as well as a place to put all of your AI art, then you can purchase this template using the link in the top pinned comment or in the description below. Now let me get back into the workspace and show you the components database. So that was a very basic overview of the homepage. Like I said, these engineered mid journey prompts do wonders when it comes to generating this kind of art. And I've designed these prompts to work well with the components database. So whenever I need something done in mid journey now, I actually just go to one of my engineered mid journey prompts and I copy it. Then I open up my components database. And within this database, what I've done is I've compiled the 10 most important components that go into making beautiful art. And within each one of these, I've provided 50 items in order to really get the creative juices flowing whenever I am in here. Style is actually one of my favorite component categories because when you go in here, what you'll notice is that within each of these, I have added a image for what the kind of style of art is. So I made this view so I could get a general overview of all the components and also so I could keep count of how many components I have. As you can see, I've added one more subject, so I have 51 subjects. But when I find more items that I want to add, I'll just go here and hit add new component. And what that'll do is pull up this screen to where I can name it and then give it a component type and add it to my component database. But I can also go into these individual categories right here and see just what I'm looking for. So let's say I want an emotional tone for my picture. Well, I can go here and then I can scroll through all 50 of these, copy and paste it into my mid journey prompt. Now also within this components database, I really wanted to make sure that I had the ability to favorite certain components. So I wouldn't have to search through all 500 every time I wanted to find something or all 50 even within a certain category. So I made this database have the ability for a favorite. So as you can see, I favorited in the subjects, a samurai and a magician. And so when I go back to home and open up my subjects, as you can see, I have all four of these actually favorited in my subjects because these are subjects that I like to use frequently. So if I'm ever in here, let's say I want to use a hyper-realistic photo, what I'll do is I'll copy this, go over to my mid journey, and then what I'll do is I'll paste it in here, and I can go in here and I can replace the subject, I can replace the background and environment, and I can choose what preposition I want with the subject in relation to the background and environment. And the beautiful thing about these prompts is they are just template prompts, so if I do want to change the camera settings here, I can, these are the settings that I found work best for a hyper-realistic portrait. So that's why I put it in the foundations of that prompt. And what I wanted with this database was so I could just go in here and easily create my art. That's why I've designed these 10 engineered mid-journey prompts for myself and others who want to use them. Because the hang up on a lot of art is you just don't know the parameters and you also don't know what to input within mid-journey in order to get those results you want. So now I'm going to show you my workflow when I am using one of these engineered mid-journey prompts how I go into my components database and how I use those components in order to generate some awesome AI art. And what I'm also going to show you is how easy it is to add pictures to my gallery with the prompt that I used for that picture. So if we go back to this prompt that I was discussing earlier, what I can do is I can go in my components database first and find a subject. Now, if I wanna be actually efficient, what I could do is close this tab and make it a little bit smaller. And I could also make my Google tab a little bit smaller as well 
And now I have a split screen view to where I can easily see my components and also at the same time see my mid-journey prompt. So over on the right hand side here, I have hyper-realistic portrait of a subject. So first I need to find a subject. I'm just going to go into my favorite components and find a subject here. Let's say I wanna do a stallion. That could be kind of cool. A hyper-realistic portrait of a stallion. So I'm just going to copy that, head over to my subject, paste it in there. And now I'm just going to choose a preposition. I kind of want it on something. I don't really want it around or within something. Since it's a horse, I kind of want it on a certain background or environment. I just think that'd be much cooler. And now that I've chosen my preposition, now I just need to quickly pick a background and environment, and then I can leave the camera settings the same since I know that they work very well. So where would a horse mostly be good at? I'm just going to go to my favorite components here in the background and environments category. And I don't think it would necessarily be good at an ancient temple, a hidden underground city. I also don't think that, that would be very fitting, although it could be pretty cool. Lush rainforest, probably not. So I think a picturesque beach might be the way to go. So I'm going to copy this now and I'm going to delete background and environment with the brackets over in mid journey. And I'm going to paste in picturesque beach. And once again, I'm going to leave the camera settings the same. I'm going to open up Discord so it's full length now. And I'm going to send off this prompt so that you can watch the magic of how well this prompt works when it comes to generating a hyper-realistic photo. And this is what the pictures turned out like. I mean, this is just stunning. You have water dripping out of this horse's mouth. You can see every little detail. The mane is looking flowy. And if somebody showed one of these images to me, I would not think that this was an AI picture. Out of all these, I think I liked the fourth one the best, so I'm going to upscale that now. And while it's upscaling, what I'm going to do is copy this title here that I used in order to generate it. I'm going to leave out that second V5. Since I already have my settings for mid journey on V5, it adds a second V5 because I added that in the template prompt, but it doesn't change the photo at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy that prompt and now I'm going to open this link and save this image. And next what I'm going to do is hit add to gallery and then I can just paste in that title just like that. This is why I love it so much. It's so quick and easy to use. And then I can just hit this little gray box right here in order to upload my image that I just got from Midjourney. So I'm going to hit that, hit upload, choose a file, and I'm going to choose the stallion here. Just like that, here it is, a nice little page for it. If I wanted to, I can even add some notes beneath it. Notes here, maybe what this image is about or anything of that matter. For this image in specific, I don't really want any notes. So now I can just click out of this picture and as you can see, there is a nice picture of a stallion here. And right now I have the load limit on 10 for my homepage. I can change that by going to load limit and changing how many images I wanna see. But if I wanna hit load more, what I can do is hit load more and it will view another image. So this has been a video on how I organize my AI art with Notion. If you do wanna purchase this template, once again, you can. You'll get the 500 design components the 10 engineered mid-journey prompts, and of course your own custom gallery, which you can fill up with all of your awesome art. If you do end up purchasing, please email me what your galleries look like. I'm sure that they are going to look a lot more robust than mine. That has been how I organize my AI art. I hope this video has been of help to you, maybe giving you some ideas on what you can build in order to generate your AI art, or has given you some insight on how my workflow is when I'm going about creating art with Midjourney. With all of those engineered Midjourney prompts I have, I am truly starting to feel like I'm getting a grasp on my AI art, and then I can just go in there and generate whatever I want, whenever I want. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, leave a comment letting me know what you think, and also hit that subscribe button if you're feeling extra generous. All right, I'll see you in the next video.